Hi guys, it's Caitlin Bird, your favorite service dog trainer, letting you uh, in on all the scoops that's been happening about service dogs in the news recently. So um, these are a couple articles that I do want to go through. The first one here is, I, I just have to say, I highly appreciate the person who wrote the SOP for service dogs in a lab. I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> um, the original person who did that, she has, I believe, a golden retriever. Um, and she wrote the SOP on service dogs in labs. So, and it looks like um, this is the first dog that I've seen in a lab besides hers. So this is pretty exciting stuff. Let's get into it. Doggles, booties, keep students' service dog safe in the lab. Doggles, booties. Okay, okay. This article is by Caitlin Hayes from the Cornell Chronicle, and it was published December 12th, 2022. When, Gen when Genesis Contreras, 24, transferred to Cornell earlier this year, she wanted to gain research experience in a lab, but there was a challenge. Contreras realized relies on a service dog to warn her of sudden and debilitating headaches and fainting spells, and due to potential hazards, even service dogs are often prohibited in a lab setting. Very true. In other words, Contreras needed her dog to keep her safe in the lab. But the dog, a four-year-old beagle named Nugget, needed to be safe in the lab as well. Not to mention, if you have a dog that has a high sensitivity for scent. I mean, a beagle is one of those dogs, so I wonder about that as well. Multiple faculty and staff at Cornell worked collaboratively with Contreras, an animal science major in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, to find a solution. That's nice to hear. Now Nugget, now Nugget works the lab in full personal protective equipment, PPE, including doggles or dog goggles, booties, and a custom lab jacket. I need to know, wait a minute, the lab jacket? I need to know. Can I tell, is he wearing, I think he's wearing a tie. Okay, so this is just a cover tie. I've seen these for sale separately, but then this, yeah, it does. It looks like a little, little doggy jacket. I wonder if it has legs in the back. I don't know. I want to see the whole thing. Nugget sits on a designated mat alongside Contreras as she studies the threatened eastern hellbender salamander in the Cornell Wildlife Health Lab, co-directed by Kristen Schuler, assistant research professor in the Department of Public and Ecosystem Health in the College of Veterinary Medicine, an experience that Contreras says has opened her eyes to new career paths and provided valuable mentorship and correction, uh, connection. Um, yeah. Studying the eastern hellbender salamanders. Listen, those smaller reptile-like animals, uh, reptiles, um, the ones that don't have scales that are salamanders, I forget, those ones too. Typically things with high reproductive rates are fantastic to study to measure the health of an ecosystem. Um, so when scientists are doing these kinds of things, and I'm, I know this because I'm a biology major, so um, when, when biologists are studying these guys, it oftentimes is also to check and manage the health of the ecosystem because with salamanders, they need lots of water. They have a permeable membrane on their body. Look at this. I'm using all of my big science words <laughs> that I went to school for. And um, if the water isn't clean, clear, and healthy, those salamanders are not going to exist there, right? So there's there's a little uh, amphibian. That's that's the word. Are salamanders amphibians? I forget. Um, but frogs are. Frogs are for sure. So yeah, great, great indicator species. It's not something I ever saw myself doing, Country has said. I'm interested in conservation, but I always thought that meant working more directly with animals. I've learned that you can work on conservation in the lab, and it's just as much fun, and it fulfills you just as much too. When Nugget leaves his mat to lean on Contreras, or even sometimes on postdoctoral researcher Alyssa Kagner, 13, PhD 21. Wait, is someone 13 years old? What? That's hella impressive if you are. They both know it's time to assess how Contreras is feeling and to take a break if needed. 
With Nugget's warning, Contreras can often take steps like resting, eating, or drinking, or taking medicine to lessen or even prevent an attack. Genesis, again, I want to see the back of this dog's get up. I want to see the whole thing. I want to see your, your scrubs, sir. Genesis has helped me learn enough of Nugget's signals to know that if he's left his place, it's because he's trying to alert us, that we need to have a concert conversation about how she's feeling and whether we need to take modifications to keep her safe. Kegner said, it's extremely impressive. In all of this, we've been the lucky ones. Genesis has been incredibly patient with us and has allowed us to pop, push the bounds of what we can do. Cornell programs and people committed to inclusion and access helped make Nugget's entry to the lab possible. Contreras first expressed interest in research while participating in the Howard Hughes Medical Institute Cornell, Cornell University Research Transfer. There's a lot of big words, like big words in here, uh, program, which helps life science students transferring from two year institutions build community and connect with the research opportunities at Cornell. It's one of two programs. Okay, cool, cool, cool. They have programs. I love that. What has really changed over the 20 years I've been at Cornell is that more people are appreciating that individuals with disabilities are part of a diverse population and are embracing that and seeing the creation of an accessible and inclusive campus as a collective responsibility, Semper said. I've seen more campus community members wanting to know what individuals with disabilities are experiencing here and they want to be more proactive about truly considering and including us, disability, identity, and all. That, I mean, hands, hands down. Because what most people say when they, when they look at, what is this, what, what is Contreras, 21, 21 years old? What do most people want to say? Why do you need a service dog? You don't look unhealthy. You don't, you look fine. Hello? Hello? This is what we call invisible disability, okay? And it's very invalidating when people ask those types of questions. And it's really nice to see that Cornell is, um, you know, working and trying to incorporate this more into their programs. Um, so that's fantastic. All right, where did we leave off? Here we go. Case in point, support for Contreras was swift, enthusiastic, and widespread. Reagan and Avery August, professor of immunology and deputy provost uh, for the university, helped connect Contreras with Schuler, and approvals from many others came readily. Kagner, who has volunteered with Guiding Eyes for the Blind over a decade, immediately began researching options for making the lab safe for Nugget, passing information to Contreras, who made final decisions about what would work best and how to train Nugget with the PPE, a process of acclimating him to and encouraging him with each new piece of equipment. Ah, this is, this is gold. This is just like, my ears are listening and it's just, it's, this article's dripping gold. I have. Uh, I love it. I didn't want to research to be a burden on Genesis, and I wanted to make sure she was empowered to make those choices for herself, Kagner said. Our laboratory, our laboratory co-directors have brought such creativity and flexibility to making a diverse group of people feel at home. And personally, for me, they've been so generous with their time and mentorship. I feel as a scientist and a conservationist, I have an obligation to try to pay it forward, to make it as easy as possible for many different people as possible to have access to this field. In addition to gaining valuable skills, Contreras said her experience in the lab also makes her feel connected and encouraged providing one-on-one -on -one mentorship and a sense of what science looks like beyond the more immediate stress of her academic courses. Because honestly, isn't that what it is? That's what science is. It's just stress. <laughs> it's just lots of courses and stress. <laughs> the work we're doing is important, but it gives me so much relief too. It doesn't feel like I'm running a race with an end, which is how classes can sometimes feel. The work is really heavy and then you get a grade, she said. The research is more ongoing, and I can make mistakes and correct them as I go. Oh, that's really nice. Contreras said the community of support for her and Nugget at Cornell has extended beyond her lab prep placement and has involved staff from housing and residential life, student disability services, Cornell Health, all part of student campus life, as well as her coworkers at the cinema, her professors, and her peers. 
my main takeaway from this is that none of this is a one size fits all approach as Kagner. Every service animal is unique. Every service user is unique. And having that open dialogue is key to developing a successful outcome. Genesis is an awesome scientist. She's really going to do incredibly well in whatever she chooses to do. We've been really lucky to be a part of that growth and journey for her. All right. You know what I've learned? My biggest takeaway? If you're going to go to school, go for Cornell. <laughs> if you have a service dog and you want to go to school, Cornell. <laughs> All the way.